Hello, sword friends. Hopefully, I'm on the internet and it's working. We'll we'll see if it's the truthiness or not. But uh, yeah, hopefully it's working. Hopefully I'm here. Hopefully things are clear and audio is working and video is working and my face is on the thing. Um, yeah, so I um, didn't have any special plans, but there were a couple things that I thought about doing. And that was one, uh, Matt Easton put out a pretty cool video recently around five things sword reviewers get wrong. It's going to make like a response video, but maybe it's just easier to do on a live stream and chat about chat about it because I thought he had some really good points. Um, but yeah, I can talk about it. <laughs> I don't obviously agree with everything, but I do think he had some some pretty valid criticisms and critiques. Um, I also have a beer. Some time ago, somebody threw out a super chat and said, go get yourself a Guinness. I finally did a make good on that and got myself a Guinness. Now, generally, not that I mind Guinness, but I prefer other hardier stouts, you might say. And I formerly lived next to an alcohol establishment wherein I could buy some very tasty imperial stouts. But the place I moved did not have such tasty beverages. And Guinness was there. It was tried and true and trusted. So I actually finally made good. I got myself a Guinness. I wish I remember who bought it for me so I could thank them. But anyway, I made good. I got a Guinness. Cheers. Hello, Alex. Hello. I see you're joining in there. Anyway, um, so I can chat a bit about the Matt Easton thing. And I also saw this really cool thing on the old Humble Bundle. Um, if you are unfamiliar with Humble Bundle, they sell video games and other cool stuff. This is a Humbly bundle thing right here. So here's my screen. This is a... And they have bundles up here, and you can go check out all sorts of stuff. Anyway, it's like a charity spot, but they have two really cool things going on if you are interested in photography or YouTube creation stuff. And I kind of kick myself because uh, Vegas Edit, I've been using Vegas Edit 16, hoping that a bundle like this would come out, and I haven't done it for a couple of years. And so I've been using version 16 for a long time to edit videos. And I was like, oh, I really hope they come out with one, but then like a a sale came up for upgrading for $80 and I picked it up. So I went from 16 to 20, but now here's a bundle for 25 bucks where you could get version 18, which basically does all, you know, all the things I would need it to do. Uh, version 16 isn't so great for like some vertical video stuff. They didn't do as much of that. So some of the YouTube shorts that I try to edit, they're a little bit cumbersome to do. Uh, it doesn't do HDR as well and some other crap, but anyway, Vegas 18 would have totally been awesome. It's $25. And if you're not using Premiere, which can cost you uh, like a monthly fee, this is like the cost of one month. Incidentally, um, likewise, I use Lightroom to edit most of my photos. I've never used Luminar. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, but I've heard good things about it. And so if you are also interested in photo editing and playing around with stuff, some of these programs can really do some pretty cool stuff with your photos. You'd be impressed, even with photos from your cell phone and stuff, what what a difference just some of the dials are. And a lot of these things like Luminar, which I believe is meant to be a competitor to Lightroom, which is what I use to, to play around with a lot of the photos that you might see on Instagram or see as a, as kind of filler in some of the videos that I have or not, not filler. <laughs> They're the overlay. It's the star. But if I really need to get in, uh, a lot of them I process in Lightroom and Luminar is a not monthly subscription based version of that. And again, 20 bucks, you get some pretty cool bunches of stuff. I don't know what all this is. Aurora HDR, though, is also really cool. Uh, if you play with HDR photos, I, I have this. They put it in previous bundles. I don't use it very often because it makes very big files. But sometimes, especially if I'm doing like landscape photography and I want it to have a particular HDR look, uh, I like this. So again, I'm kind of tempted to buy it just because. But I can talk about that. I can even go through and like show it, I guess, in action, if if that is a thing that's interesting. But I get asked a lot about creation and like what I use. And I'm I'm certainly far from the best creator out there, uh, but I've, I've gradually improved. <laughs> and so I've, I can at least speak to the journey of like what it was like to film on a potato and use 
movie maker <laughs> and then like move into editing software. Uh, and this is, I, from my view, a, a really excellent deal on stuff. So um, I would encourage you to check out Humble Bundle if you're interested. If you already have photo editing software and you're not interested in it, that's fine. But it is what I use. It's been pretty good to me. Um, it's not without flaws. It's certainly not perfect. Like it sometimes errors out and does some goofy stuff. But generally speaking, it's pretty good. Uh, and yeah, and I can I can run down and, and edit. So anyway, point was, if you are an aspiring creator or you're already a creator and you're not locked into a premiere, you don't have access to that video editing software, but you want to kind of do the next step above the, the free or default video makers, uh, this for 25 bucks does a lot of cool stuff in my mind and uh, can can kind of help you take your videos to to the next level. Um, there's also lots of tutorials and stuff like that about how to do things. It's funny because like I'll, the software will break and I'll be like, how to make Vegas stop crashing? And then there's like a bunch of YouTube tutorials and like things I can do and, and, they, and they work. Anyway, well, bam, that is also the thing I can talk about. Joe, I'm looking over at my live stream stuff. Hello, glad you could join me. Uh, Phoenix, hello, does anyone know a way to buy entry-level katanas in Europe? Unfortunately, I don't. I think Cult of Athena sells stuff in Europe, but I, I imagine the shipping is going to change the, the entry-level price to a mid-level price. And I think there are uh, a number of resellers that, that do work exclusively in Europe, or primarily anyway. Yari Nohanzo is one that comes to mind, but I'm, I'm not sure exactly what, uh, what vendors are the predominant ones inside of Europe. So I don't have a better answer. Uh, Joe, due to view Lightroom, then you are paying a monthly fee anyways. No, yeah. Well, Lightroom and Photoshop are $10 a month, and sometimes they run a special for Premiere to do it for $30 a month. So I do photo. I'd like take pictures of my kids. I take pictures of swords, and I use consistently Lightroom, um, and I, I enjoy the feature changes that they put in there and, like, the upgrades and stuff like that. So every couple months there's, like, a new bar that shows up that does something kind of cool. Um, and I'm just, I've used Lightroom when it was a paid software and I would skip every couple versions. I'd buy a new one when like I got a new camera or something like that because they, they would make you do that. Um, but I was already like, my catalog is already in there. I've taken thousands of photos and they're sorted and rated and yada, yada, yada in a Lightroom catalog. So I, I feel like that 10 bucks a month, if I could buy a standalone version, I would. But if they're going to make me pay $120 a year for it, fine. I'm not happy about it, um, but I was like, I find that to be the path of least resistance. Alternatively, though, if I wasn't, I'd, I'd probably be looking into something like Luminar or something like that. Uh, and the extra $20 a month to have access to Premiere when I'm not, I'm not locked into it seems imprudent. Hopefully that makes sense. DaVinci free version is the most pro of the cheap stuff. I haven't, you know, I've tried um, Movie Maker. I've tried HitFilm. I've tried uh, like the the Mac version. I edited on a MacBook for a minute. There was a, there was a free version that was on, on that. And then I think I got Vegas 13 or 14 in a humble bundle. Like they're usually a couple years old. So I want to say probably around 2016, I got the 2014 version of Vegas Pro from a humble bundle. And that's what I've I've used pretty consistently since then. And I've upgraded as <laughs> as they've released in an humble bundle. And this is the first time I I I purchased an upgrade. So I've gotten version 14, 15, and 16. And now they're they've released 18 on on this here website right there. You can see it. Anyway. Um so yes, there's there's a few a few good ones though. It seems like people are recommending DaVinci. I I'd say that's good. I haven't used it though. Why? So I can't say it's good. Sorry. That was a brain fart right there. I can't say that it's good because I never used it, but I think I've heard of it before. Uh, called the Athena does ship to Europe, 100 to 150 bucks, which is, yes, I can imagine when you're, when you're looking to buy a $60 sword, uh, or something, you know, presumably around a hundred dollars, doubling the cost is, is likely no good. Anyway, I don't know. I'm afraid I have no great answers for you, but I would keep an eye potentially just maybe a road that you haven't thought of 
uh, Facebook, My Armory, uh, Sword Buyer's Guide. There are periodically folks in Europe that are selling swords on the secondhand market, and it isn't necessarily a guaranteed way to save, you know, and buy an entry level sword. But there there may be opportunity there for you to find one secondhand in Europe and and get a good deal on it that way. Do you think you've developed an arm issue from years of doing Yado training? Just old age. <laughs> yeah, uh, fair enough, Joe. I, I know on my last stream, I started to get a little lightheaded. Um, uh, I, I had my vision kind of went blotchy and I couldn't talk straight. So I stopped, I laid down and feeling better. Hasn't happened since then, which is good. Um, maybe I just lack air. So I'm leaving the door open in my, <laughs> in my office now it seems, seems to have helped. Um, that was the last dream, but my arm specifically, it is not better at all. Um, I did, it, it hurts when I poke myself here. <laughs> so I, I don't know exactly what I did. I, I have a sneaking suspicion that I whacked my elbow or something while I was moving and it's entirely possible because it feels like maybe I bruised it. Like there's nothing visible on it, but if I poke myself in the bone, it hurts a lot. And every now and again, I'll like be holding my little one and actually brush against the door jam, which is I bet how it happened in the first place. Cause I'm a bit of an oaf and, uh, and I'll, it'll, it'll, I'll yelp quite a bit. So, um, in, in some cases it feels better, but like after a day of work of just like sitting, cause I do mousy keyboardy clicky stuff. Doesn't feel great. Doesn't feel great. And stretches and things like that don't seem to help. Um, it doesn't seem to be getting necessarily better, but I did put one of those, uh, I don't know, in class some time ago, somebody had a a band and it, it reminded me of putting noise canceling on noise canceling headphones on, but for pain and on my arm. And it it reduced the it reduced it a little bit. Anyway, uh not not fantastic, but I'm I'm confident it will hopefully get better eventually. If I did some sort of day, I don't know, it says like you know, six weeks to six months, somewhere in there. I, I should probably go to the doctor, but I. this is not medical advice for anyone else. If you have ailments like myself, please be smarter than me and go see a doctor. But I, I'll tell you, I get really sick of going to the doctor and having them tell me, well, if it hurts in two weeks, come back, give me your lunch money, give me give me another couple hundred dollars or some amount of money that is seems unacceptable for this level of advice. And then, uh, you know, walk it off, take some, take some aspirin, see what happens. That's historically been, apart from like when I'm very injured or, hurt my back or something like that, that, that tends to be the advice I get from a doctor every time I go. So I just, I just don't want to give them $200 and tell them, have them tell me to walk it off. <laughs> so I figure if I'm like, yeah, it's been hurting for a year. Maybe, maybe they'll do something. But I'm like, why didn't you come in sooner? I'll be like, well, cause historically my experiences have been, have been bad. Anyway, that was not the question you asked, but hopefully that answered it. We have swapped DaVinci Pro at work for from Premier. Nice. Uh, is DaVinci Pro a, is that the free one or is DaVinci Pro a one that has more cost? I guess I'm not familiar, but if you dig it and it's working for you. Feel lucky to catch you streaming. I recently subbed to the channel since I got interested in Katana. And I got to say, I appreciate your work. Thank you. I am glad it's doing something for you and that you enjoy it. Eric, hello. Glad you could join. Um, it looks like there's a few people in here. I can re-elaborate on my plan to option A. I can I can go either way. I can respond a little bit to what Matt Easton said some time ago. He did a five things YouTubers or sword reviewers typically miss. A lot of it I agreed on. Uh, some of it, I just have a, maybe a different perspective. I can talk about that. Um, or I can babble about editing video and I can maybe do one a little bit. I have, I have Vegas going up in the background and I can throw on like how I edit a short. If that is a thing that somebody is interested in seeing. Or I can drink this beer and you can ask me sword questions. I'm okay. Either way. I got about an hour, uh, until my little kid wakes up or maybe before then who knows but that's about how long i plan on streaming uh folks in chat which would you rather see me do 
I don't know how to put up a poll, so I'm not going to be able to do that, but I can totally, I can totally uh, do any one of those things. Arston, hopefully I'm saying you're Ariston. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Hello. Power Hour. I'm not sure what that reference is, Eric. I'm not. What, what are you talking about? The Power Hour? Yeah, I suppose it, I said it's an hour. I, well, anyway, long silence while, while uh, I wait for people to chat is, is probably not terribly interesting. Joe, you're the first to respond. Editing. So I can uh, I can do that a bit. Um, so what I've got in the background here is Vegas. This is the, the new version, uh, Vegas 18 might look a little bit like the old version here. I'll open it briefly just so you can see that the new one is basically the same thing, but they've modernized the visuals a little bit and make it, made it look a little less meh. This is the ad that comes up <laughs> telling you you can upgrade which you can turn off. I had to find that in a YouTube tutorial. Anyway, I imagine Vegas 18 is probably going to look somewhere between these two, but I'm not entirely sure. So uh, I recently pulled out a thingy thing, a uh, camera, and I did a little vertical video. So I've got two monitors. You can't see the other one, but basically I'm just going to drag and drop one of these over here and it kind of plops on the timeline. Now, in theory, there's my face. Here's an audio track. Here's a video track. There's all sorts of stuff that I can do. But first, I think what I should do is probably sort out my video because this is not typically how you would watch a YouTube video, right? I gotta, I gotta change my preferences, which ideally I would have done ahead of time. Now, I'm sure there's a number of people who edit professionally and I am sorry you are watching me do this, if that's the case, because it's probably really, really irritating to, to watch somebody uh, like like me do this. Uh, assholery. But I'm, I'm going to try. Anyway, I'm not great at video editing, so please bear in mind that there, there are very likely smarter ways to do almost every step of, of this. Uh, one thing I will say that I like about this newer version, which I'm guessing is included in, in the 18 version, is this. Uh, this wasn't part of 16. I didn't have a vertical video uh, option. <laughs> so now I can select this, and I don't have to like custom make a, a video format, which is what I previously had to do and was pretty irritating. Um, you still may notice I, I'm not in the box, but I'll fix that in a second. Let me check out chat. Always. Yeah. Are, are you tipping one back yourself? Join in the fun. Power is one shot of beer per, per minute. And I don't know if I'm going to average that or if the stream would go particularly well. Uh, <laughs> just received a cloud hammer. Uh, differently hardened sand my It's not the same as the through hardened you just got, but I agree on every point. Well, I'm glad you agree, or maybe I'm not glad. I'm always hoping that I get some example that is hopefully reasonably representative, but leaves room for, for improvement and for people to be impressed by different things. Um, but yeah, I, th I think they do mostly, mostly good stuff. I think, I think the review was, was generally pretty positive. There's opportunity to, to do stuff better, but uh, generally I think they do pretty solid stuff. They could compete with Zisei with some tweaking as their Sasha Komi is very similar in quality. Interesting. I haven't seen a, a version of their like good polish doing, doing something a little more artsy fartsy in the, in the vein of Zisei. I've always seen swords that seem to really focus on performance uh, from a, like a durability perspective on, on a budget, like a budget durability kind of thing, right? They're not $5,000 
and very durable. They're you know under a thousand dollars and and very durable. So, um, yeah, it's interesting to I have I've seen some photos. It looks like they make good stuff, but I, I haven't gotten a chance to see it. Two monitors looks good. Looks like the same color as Premier. Can't wait to see if Cloud Hammer Swords to get my Cloud Hammer Swords <laughs> waiting on two currently. Have the Riado, which is decent. I agree. I, I was thinking about doing the Iido first. Um, I have an Iido and uh, another one made from the same. I can't remember what it is still. And I thought I'd do a video where I'd include them both. I still might, but I got licensed to break one. And most of my energy went into making that video and getting the footage for it and all that kind of stuff. And then my, my elbow didn't feel good and breaking stuff hurt. So I, I haven't gotten to it just yet. That's why I, I pivoted and did the S5 one. All right. Um, hopping back over here. So to sort out my dumb face, I have to go over here and say, hey, um, my dumb face is, is dumb. Four by three, 16 by nine. Okay. Well, they don't have... They don't have the thing. So I gotta I gotta switch these around. I gotta unlock it, I think. Unlock the aspect ratio. I gotta change this to twenty come on now. Put it on sixty. And I gotta change this to thirty four eighty. Thirty eight forty. Then I gotta relock it. And then I gotta turn it this way. Uh, I screwed it up to 90. Knock it down a little bit just in case I screwed something up. And there's my dumb face for vertical video. Bam. Um, okay. Now, when I'm recording stuff, here's going to be a little video inception. Uh, my camera that I'm talking into right now has a microphone. And it. I don't think I have desktop audio on right now, so you won't hear it. Mm, no, I don't. Um, so it records stuff and you can hear it. Unfortunately, if I turn it on, then I'm going to get a whole bunch of Facebooky noises and other stuff that comes through. So I won't bother turning it on, but basically the microphone is not particularly good. Uh, so you'll see microphone and here's, here's some audio inception. This is OBS and it's free and you can set up all sorts of bits. Here's, here's the mess that you don't get to see in the preferred angle. But uh, there's a webcam hooked up on this one. This is a better camera. Anyway, uh, you can do all of the video in OBS if you want, if you can manage that. I think streamy people do it. I don't though. Anyway, what I do use OBS for is sometimes for some backup video, sometimes for some quick video. I find that my webcam looks a bit like a potato. It's not so great. Uh, well, at least I should say I have better options. So I tend not to use the web camera. Um, but this microphone, the schwanz in my face over here is much better sounding. So I will use this primarily for an audio track. And then I usually include video so I can see what the hell's happening and roughly where I am in the conversation. And you don't have to, you like, you can make it your desktop or that kind of thing. Here's, here's, here's the other monitor going on. Anyway, I use this for audio recording and when it's done, it gives me files like, well, let me find the file on the other monitor, which you can't see. Okay, so here's my OBS files. And if I drag and drop the same one into here, theoretically, these two are me recording on a camera and then also OBS. I think another thing that this do wacky does is it will align. Previously, I had to do this manually, but in theory, I'm still getting used to it. The software will analyze stuff and there's a tools, multi-camera, synchronize audio events. So in theory, it will look at the video very slowly, apparently, and uh, well, you can't see it. Uh, there we go. Here's this little bar ticking away to analyze the audio, but then it will line up my talky bits. So it'll look at this audio track here and this audio track here, and then it will theoretically line them up in such a way where it works. Um, but it's thinking, so I'm going to switch over to just my dumb face here. 
and check out chat again and see where where I left off. Uh, the suka they have is a huge selling point for me. I really like the the what the the ito that's used in the shape that that uh, Cloud Hammer is doing. I think it's it's a strong selling point. Um, so far, that ito has proven to be pretty resilient and durable. It doesn't seem to absorb like oils and stuff quickly. Any any ito will like any object you're handling a lot is going to go show signs of wear. But I think it seems to hold up pretty well, and I I find it really interesting how it it feels like kind of easy on the hands. It's, it feels very supple, but not in a way that makes it feel loose, right? And that's that's a tough tough balance to have. If, if something feels squishy in the hand, then it's very easy for it not to feel like you're in very solid control. And in fairness, you don't, right? So for practicing EI, for holding it, it's fine. It does a good job. But by contrast, like just raw samagawa <laughs> grips your hand really well, but it also shreds the skin off your hands too. So there's... There's too much grip that you can have. I think I think they do a great kind of lazy boy recliner Ito style, which which I appreciate. Uh, looking forward to get a differentially hardened cloud hammer in in hand. Or the through hardened is so damn close. I can imagine how crazy sharp you can get an edge on the differentially hardened pieces. Yeah, I, I imagine so. Um, I haven't found that really sharpening makes too big a difference on, I mean, certainly edge retention would, um, but I haven't found a difference in like my ability to create an edge on a differentially hardened versus a through hardened blade. But that could just be that I, I do it lazily on a belt sander. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'd like to see more of that as well. Uh, it does seem like their, their focus has, and I can't, I can't blame them, right? Like on, on, let me format words. Good. Uh, it seems like, the focus has been on really durable performing blades rather than pretty looking refined blades. And I can't blame them for that. At least the blade they sent me and as a, as a guy who tests and in a particular fashion, which is typically do normal stuff a little bit and then smash it on hard things in the backyard. Well, to, to go far in that test, a softer through hardened blade is, is going to just be more resilient in, in those kinds of tests. Um, and it seems like that's the, the recipe for a lot of people's, it, a lot of people's minds. That is good. That's what, that's what a sword should be able to do, uh, rather than like hold an edge retention. The difference between cutting like 20 mats, uh, or, or maybe doing a hundred cuts or something like that, and then needing to rehone your edge to get that really hair popping sharp versus a thousand cuts doesn't seem to have the same. I don't know, the, the, the same draw as being able to uh, have a blade that doesn't bend and flexes well and is just very forgiving about being beaten into logs and metal pipes. Also kind of funny, I was editing a short when you're streaming. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, Eric, if you're if you're into it, I, Vegas is, is good stuff. Um, you have to have a computer to do it, though, right? So that's, I guess, another thing. I know a lot of people do stuff on their mobile phones. Um, I've been thinking about, I saw Joe record, recorded a, a video on a mobile phone. I'm kind of tempted to do the same thing and just show, well, just see what I can do with just a mobile phone as well. I'm not sure if I'd do the editing on a mobile phone. I think I'd still go back to the computer. Um, people are talking amongst themselves. Let's see, what do I got? Do you know any seller or Japanese blacksmith who makes... Real Nihonto and Tamahagane. Personally, uh, Toro Asano, I think. I think that's the, the Smith name he, he went by. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel. I'll see if I can. I can't remember what it is, though. But yes, I've, I've, I've met a few uh, Japanese blacksmiths that make things and talk to them about making stuff. Um, but at the same time, I, I can't say I know any particularly well or that I'm I'm dear friends with any, uh, and you can certainly buy those things. There are antiques available. There are um, not antiques and, and more modern made, you know, Nihonto made by Japanese smiths, presumably out of Tamahagane. And then there are, are blades that you can commission today 
uh, I believe Tizondo just put up like a, a site that connects people with, with Smith a little bit easier than has, has been made available in the past. So I think there are avenues available if, if that's what you're looking for. And if you are, uh, best of luck. I, I don't generally buy them, not because I don't like them, though. Um, it's just not – it's it's easier to get taken advantage of. <laughs> I guess it's it's harder to know what you're getting uh, sometimes in, in the Japanese sword world, whether – if it's genuine Nihonto stuff, it's, it seems very highly faked, or at least there are there are more fakes out there, and it's, it's harder to know exactly what you're getting. Um, but I still buy some. I still enjoy it, and it, – I think Tazando seems to be the easiest way of going about it. Otherwise, Paul Martin um, was, uh, he runs the Japanese sword and again, has a YouTube channel and stuff, but is, is also known for connecting folks to, to people that want to make swords or can make swords, but expect, you know, um, I think probably eight ish thousand dollars is probably the, the starting point to commission a sword and, and have it made to, to your liking. How is the new home? And are you guys settled in? Shane, I appreciate you asking. Uh, it is very nice. It's a very nice house. It's an upgrade. It's very pretty. I feel uh, like I made it a little bit, right? Like I got this house. It's bigger. It's fancier than than anything I, uh, me or my wife have been in. We both came from humbler places. And so living in, in, a, in a big old house is, uh, uh, I don't know, it's it's, it's very nice. It's very pleasant. I feel very, very lucky. I also feel a little out of my element, though. Like, there's <laughs> there's there's a lot to do. Uh, just projects left over, but I'm, I'm gradually taking them on. Today, I've already fixed a fart fan in a bathroom. I replaced a motor there. And so now my, my stink can be vacated from the home. That's good. And I have some other, like, a bathroom sconce to replace or something. But slowly but surely, I would... I have some... Uh, some ideas for like my little sword closet to dress it up so the stuff isn't just leaning against the wall. But unfortunately, it keeps kind of getting pushed back and pushed back, and it'll, it'll, and now it's really cold out. So I'm not, not sure. But yes, the messes are generally contained and at least have, have their place. They're, they're consolidated. So the house looks reasonably clean, feels reasonably in order. Uh, most of the stuff is working. The only, other thing that we found is like we have this very strange oven, which is a microwave oven combination that goes in a wall and it's 27 inches wide. And apparently they're hard to find. <laughs> so I, I went to, to Best Buy to go order one and there just weren't any. <laughs> There's none available until like next year. So uh, that's about it. Other than that, like things things are going. It's feeling pretty good. I appreciate you asking. Uh, let's see. I use my phone for all my editing. My phone has an excellent camera and the free video guru editing program is all I need. Yeah, it's, uh, no argument. You know, lots of people create with their phone. Eric, you're doing your thing. Certainly, hopefully, uh, d don't, don't insinuate that I am telling you that you need to do anything different. If you want to though, then there's some cool ways to tell stories that are, are, different and I think, well, they feel a little easier to me. I always struggle to edit on a mobile phone. I've tried it and I think it's like maybe the same kind of issue that I have with like using a controller to play video games. Like I grew up with a keyboard and mouse and so I can't, it's really hard for me to to, to use another uh, medium to, to connect with the this stuff. Um, but yeah, some of the cell phone applications can do all the stuff you need. I think a computer, it, you know, does it a little differently, but maybe gives you a few more options. And um, some of the software is, is you know, more powerful and lets you lets you do some some different stuff. I don't know that you couldn't do anything. I bet there's probably some stuff you can only do on a computer, though. I just there's some horsepower differences. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm not an expert in editing. I should probably get back to the thing that I was talking about. I like how I show like five bit five seconds of editing and then like i'm like yeah i move back to sword conversation so anyone that's actually trying to get anything meaningful from any part of the <laughs> conversation gets gets neither one uh i shot cloud hammer a video on my cell i shot the cloud hammer video on my cell phone had a pro mic attached to pro lighting uh but i edited in premiere and did uh b-roll with a cell phone camera not the same 
but it can work. Yeah, I I saw your video, Joe, and I thought it was pretty cool. And I was thinking about doing something the same. I've used a lot of different equipment. And when I started, I used effectively like a, a gimmicky GoPro that I got on uh, a website called Woot for like $20 or something like that. It was it was not great, not terribly clear. And now I have you know nicer cameras that I use. I have a few nicer cameras that I get to use. I use different software. Um, I have lighting, even though I don't use it very often. I have a bunch of camera stuff that I bought and like thought I would use it and then don't like gimbals. They're expensive, but I don't use them. <laughs> and so, there's a bunch of stuff. I just don't bother ever to, to break out. Every now and again, I'll break out like lighting though and soft boxes and try to try to do something. And then it just gets to be a pain. Uh, so I, I, I do some hodgepodgey stuff and make do. A thinner hello. Given my background, I need to adhere to a type of quality, but I can't blame anyone from using a cell phone. It's super easy. If I edit shots on my phone, I use Adobe Rush. That's included with my bundle. Your premiere stuff. I gotcha. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I see people. I think you can make very meaningful content either way. It's more... I would imagine if you're using a cell phone video editor that some of the stuff and like tricks and transitions and fades and moving to black and white and grading and uh, doing multiple different layers of things just gets a little bit complicated and, and hard to do when you're, when you're touching with your fingers. Um, yeah, but as people certainly do it in a way that's entertaining. <laughs> no worries, Eric. Uh, I don't know. P I, I, not that I expect you to be sensitive. Sometimes I, I, I just want to be cognizant that by showing video editing stuff uh, and encouraging folks to buy some program that um, if you've got a better way to do it or you've got a way that you prefer, yeah, keep, keep at it. I'm not trying. Anyway, sometimes, I don't know. Sometimes people say like, you have to do it or you're an asshole. You suck if you don't buy programs and spend more money and you don't have to, you don't have to do that. If you want to, if you find it fun, then it lets you kind of tell stories in a different way, which I think is neat. Um, but at the same time, like kind of with, with a soft thing, <laughs> like, if it's fun for you, go for it. But if you don't, then no worries. Anyway, it looks like my software finished uh it finished a minute ago and it did not do anything so awesome uh um, it's cool that i paid 80 dollars and that feature does not function so here's the oldy way of doing it you zoom in and generally speaking the audio only has to be close you'll notice if it's like too far this way or too far that way uh, but sometimes it'll be a little bit forward like a, a frame or two off and that doesn't seem to drive too many people crazy. Uh, for the most part, you're all right. Anyway, this is a short. And you probably get to see me now uh, attempt to make a short, right? So what I do is I clear this. I don't pull the video track out. I could just delete the video track. But I don't. I tend to, to mute it or pull it down so it doesn't render in anything. That's what this bar does. So if I go over here. This bar eats it one way. This bar does another. Anyway, I pull this out because I don't want that video track in. And what you might see behind the scenes is probably something you're, you're all very aware of. And that is that uh, it takes me more than one try to get through stuff. So to do a short, I try, because it's less than one minute, to do it in one fell swoop, right? But this is all the times that I screwed that up. <laughs> it did, and it didn't work out. And I had to start over. And so basically, uh, as I'm recording stuff, I'll know for this particular instance anyway, that the last one is the keeper. When I feel like I did it well, then basically I can come over here. Um, these two ticks, I'll kind of flick my fingers. And those are visual indicators when I go into the software that I've screwed something up or that like I'm, it's the take, it's the, the snappy thing that they use in it's some, some indicator that when I go back to edit this, that there is a break and I should edit it out. 
So that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, this looks like about the part that I start talking. I've got my mouth open. That's fantastic. This is a great way to start, but whatever. Let's do that. So I'm going to pull it out here, and then I'm going to take all of my footage and bring it over to the beginning. And then it looks like I, do I just stop babbling. Yeah, and then my camera just stops for some reason and screws it up. <laughs> so it's like, so this footage is unusable, and I got to go back and do it again. <laughs> Fantastic, which is also par for the course in, in many of the things that I do. Uh, I will probably see if I can salvage this, but um, I'm not sure if I will be able to. <laughs> uh anyway so yeah that's that's editing we'll try another one filming in batches is another thing that is handy to do if you are um trying to make content then scheduling can be a challenge and basically uh having a few things to do helps so you can film a lot of stuff so usually now if i'm cutting i seldom cut just one thing I'm usually uh, test cutting a few things so that I can uh, make progress, right? Otherwise, if I have to do the setup and like wet the materials and fill the bottles and then no, 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 then it's it's I don't know. It just gets challenging for me to to manage it and to go out and be motivated to do it. It's also less fun and more fun to test a bunch of swords. I've also found that in testing multiple things and cutting with multiple swords at once, it helps my perspective uh, as I. As I think about, do I like this? How light is it? If I'm if I'm examining a few things, and I try to bring out uh, one sword that I'm familiar with, some something tried and true, and I I cut you know a few bottles or something like that at the same time, so I have I have a baseline. Uh, it's almost like speakers. If I think about how I would many moons ago, I used to do audio, technical home theatery kind of stuff, and if I was setting up or trying to trying to set up a room or trying to set up speakers or sound system to sound good, I would usually use media that I was really, really familiar with so that I could listen to notes and echoes and I knew how things should sound uh, so that as I was setting something up in an unfamiliar space, I could I could have a really good idea of what it was supposed to sound like uh, and and then I it made my work easier. Here, uh, when you test swords, it's not a bad idea to have one in your hand that you're familiar with if you're going out and cutting and formulating an opinion about stuff. It's a very long-winded way to say that. Anyway, here we go. This should be another one. Uh, and let's see if I can find some of these audio markers. Looks like I was further away from my camera here. Looks about in line. This one, it looks like I babbled through better. Um, but all that video stuff is still screwed up. So now I got to go back and do that first thing. All right. Let's see what chat has come up with while I'm doing that. Um, the original XP Windows Movie Maker was awesome and easy to use. That's what I started using. I think that's that's one of the first things that I did was Windows XP Movie Maker when I started my channel. Uh, the webcam footage, though, that it would grab would only be in 320 by 240. <laughs> so I, I had an HD camera, and it wouldn't record in HD. Uh, have you or anyone else in the sword community heard of Arthur Excalibur? Last I saw, he was having some health issues. Mr. Excalibur? Um, yeah. Haven't noticed any activity on his channel. I haven't checked in with him for a bit, but as I recall, something was going on that was impairing his speech. And it didn't seem like from that his mental acuity has suffered at all, but that he was uh, having having trouble speaking. And I'm not sure exactly what it is, and I don't think he's publicly said what it is, um, but I, I hope the best. I think he was writing out as well, like he was doing some of the last uh, content that he did was more uh, like had subtitles and stuff on it versus him talking. And I'm not, I'm not sure if he intends to continue doing it or not, but 
I hope he does. I enjoy his content as well. And, you know, plug for Mr. Excalibur. Go go check him out if you haven't. But uh, I can understand why it would be more painstaking to do. Talking and editing and what I'm showing you in the background is kind of already painful enough. If you have to type out everything that's pertinent to say, then, then that gets to be a challenge. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he plans on continuing, but I hope he does. I to enjoy I enjoy his content I like more voices talking about swords he has a, a different perspective he likes different things but he's he's a collector and he's been doing it a long time and uh, I think it's nice to see more voices in in the sword review realm which is part of also why I'm talking about video editing software and stuff I I, I want more people to make sword reviews um, I figured out shorts accidentally definitely increases your exposure. Yes, I struggle with shorts because I don't like them. I don't like watching them. <laughs> I don't like the way they clutter up my feed. I do not like these shorts. <laughs> but at the same time, other people do. And um, I, I find the draw to make shorts is less about uh, less about me liking them i do find them to be a bit of a drudge but at the same time i'm trying to the positives are one there's certainly the exposure side lots of people are use using them youtube is, is promotes them um there's some good stuff around around that like an incentive i suppose to do it uh, but also a, a lot of people watch them right like there's there's a lot of people that use them so finding a way to be succinct and make something meaningful with a minute is kind of a new challenge and and just a, a different way of, of thinking. So at the moment, I don't know if I'll continue doing it, but the short that I'm making here is basically like a, a, a very brief whiffum of the S5 Katana from Cloudhammer, right? That's, that's the video that I'm editing. Hopefully in the future, I can release them simultaneously so that I have a short that's like, hey, Here's the gist, which hopefully is then useful. Um, I found them useful as well to explain like uh, simple things, like people ask me questions and if I could feel like I can answer it or that there's a reasonably quick answer or that there's really no answer, but I can say that in a minute, then I, I find those to be to be helpful as well. So I, I'm trying to find a way to, to use shorts. I don't, I don't like like the, the nothing burger shorts. Uh, so that that's where I've I've kind of had to steer clear and no no discredit to anyone that makes different content I don't find con like shorts that say nothing or that are are trying to do like visual stuff because I, I see it on a cell phone and I, I feel like I can't watch it it's like the old man like I can't see anything god damn it like that that's kind of what happens when I try to watch like a, a visually appealing short and if it's just like showing a thing then I I want to know more about the thing and then I don't have any other content to watch. So I, I don't know. I don't engage with it so well. I don't like making it, but there are ways I think I can do something useful with a short and hopefully put out something that I, that I enjoy making that I find to be a challenge and interesting. And that, uh, it, and that is also interesting to, to you. <laughs> that's, that's hopefully, hopefully what I can do. I don't know if I, I don't know if I can though. I'm figuring it out. It's it's a new new ball of wax. That is not what you asked, <laughs> but that's what I rambled. All right, what was I doing here? So this thing I gotta unlock. This is the many joys of video editing is doing all of this goofy crap that is not intuitive to get it to look the way that you want. I gotta switch this thing and then move that over there and then all right and then there's that and then I for some reason it changed my video properties back why would you do that okay but it fixed it just have to know those 12 easy steps all right where the hell was I switch back to the old chat I wonder is there a way to include chat i'm no whatever all right um youtube in general is not pro 
it's not pro platform me. Not a pro platform. Many people do extremely well without even editing their videos, so it turns to be an, out to be an individual thing. With good content, anyone can be successful. Yeah, that, success is is like a, a varied thing, right? And so I know some, some folks are looking to be successful monetarily on YouTube, or uh, it's a notoriety thing, or it's a subscriber thing, or it's a view count thing, or it's so, something else. I've, um, I like the conversation side of YouTube. Like there's there's cool stuff that happens and content that goes out and things that I get to learn about. It's it's kind of I don't know. Like it it's it's humbling and cool to me that some folks have reached out and said, "Hey, one of the reasons that I started making YouTube content was you." And now I watch their content and enjoy it. And I'm like, "This is <laughs> this is so cool that like I have more shit to watch <laughs> because I made some myself." Um yeah, and and so I but I agree that there's if you there's a lot of ways to make good content and and be successful on youtube and if you have something interesting to say uh there's a great way to connect with the the a community of people that that want to watch it especially when it comes to like swords and stuff it's really it seems like not all that niche of a subject i mean given that there's hundreds of thousands of people interested across across the world um, but it's it's kind of underserved there's not a huge amount of people that talk about it anyway um, definitely hope Arthur's okay. He's a cool dude and a good reviewer. Agreed. Fetosa the Ham Slayer. I love that name. Um, missed the community been a while since I posted and interacted. Just thought I'd log on and check out what I've been missing. Hopefully there's, I'll be more active soon. Got work to do. I'll catch up. <laughs> well, I hope you stick around. Make some videos. All right. I like shorts for single cuts, a small amount of info, and the people and people are busy these days. I'm definitely Yeah, I I think there's definitely something well, I think it's a, just maybe a personality. I don't know if it's a generational thing or a personality thing. I don't like TikTok or Instagram stories. I don't really even like Instagram, frankly. Like I don't browse through very often or I find it a struggle like Instagram just keeps trying to show me boobies and I want to look at swords and, <laughs> and so not that I mind necessarily but I, I don't find it to be a, a terribly meaningful way to like interact and see what's going on uh TikTok as well like I get that there's some funny things but most of the time long form content on YouTube is what I have and I'll put it on in the background but my lifestyle allows me to do that and if and I could totally understand how somebody uh is different and engages differently. I I, I kind of prefer like message boards and long form YouTube content. It's 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 tough for me personally to engage with other content. I don't find I get as much from it or that I'm as drawn to it. Um, but I am with YouTube and I am with long winded posts on message boards for some reason. But I'm old. That's that's also a thing. I don't know if old is necessarily it. That's just how my brain engages, and that's why it's a challenge to see where I, I can fit in and, and have fun with shorts. Cause my brain just inherently is like, but a minute, what can you do with that? There's nothing, there's nothing you can, nothing I can do. <laughs> nothing that I want to watch in a minute. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a challenge. And so initially I was like, meh, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how I can do it. John from RVA Kitana the the guy that can help you with all your cloud hammer still work needs he's in the house yummy <laughs> talking about uh I, I suppose john this is an interesting question here since you sell swords you have a katana store do you find that you have a lot in common with a drug addict? Like given that you are very interested in swords, that it's it's very hard not to abuse your own stock. Is that does like a, a, a successful sword seller have to like, you know, not be all that interested in swords? Too personal, don't worry. You don't have to answer. 
General Zero. I found this channel a couple of weeks ago and I've been addicted to the content. There's so much good information. That's debatable, but I, I appreciate it. Uh, I just don't know how he affords so many swords. I don't. That's A lot of them are sent to me. <laughs> There's the secret. Um, how I afford so many swords. One is I'm old. And as you get old, hopefully you've made good financial decisions and have more money to spend on discretionary items that you enjoy as a hobby. That's one. Two, as I get a lot of them sent to me and I don't have to pay for them. And so that is also how uh, many of them accumulate. And uh, three is I buy a ton of stuff secondhand. I'm very frugal with swords. So a lot of the swords that I've reviewed, if you look at the, the videos that I've had or the swords that I've talked about, the, the vast majority of items that I have purchased myself have come secondhand. Uh, so that that is also a way that I have saved on swords. And also, I don't keep them all. So I've, I've sold and I've traded and that's also something that has happened. I still have a, a lot more swords than any one person should have. Um, but but I, I certainly don't have all of them that I've reviewed over time. Uh, a number of people as well have sent me swords and lent them to me and I return them uh, if, if I get to review. So there's a lot of stuff that shows up on the channel that I certainly don't own, never did, uh, that was a review sample or that was on loan from, from a fellow sword friend to, to see. So that hopefully explains it. You know, I, I, I don't, they're not all mine. It's, it's, it's part of it. Um, <laughs> here's John. <laughs> we sent him to I hope he likes it. Yep. John, John has sent me four of them. Well, five, one of them is, was a, a gift from cloud hammer. Um, but now I have the S5 sword that is, is wrapped up. The video came out today, and hopefully that means it, it can move on. Uh, I suppose if I'm going to just go through chat, I should stop with that background. Uh, take your long form forms and condense it to a minute. Preview the long form that works as most of the work is done already. Indeed, some shooting. But yes, so that, that's what I've been doing. I figured that that is useful as well. So that, that's part of what I find engaging about doing it is if I take um, like the the really key bits that I, I would think somebody would want to know before buying a thing and throw that in there. Um, I figure that that's useful. And for folks that don't want to listen to me ramble for half an hour, can't blame you. Uh, <laughs> the, not Probably not the folks here because I'm just rambling and it's even less concise given that I can't edit it. But um, that one minute hopefully gets the point across and 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 is is concise and useful. And so I, I figure like I'm contributing to the conversation by doing that, and it's it's helpful to folks. And it also uh, for a minute I was doing um, like a quick version and a long version. I think shorts maybe take up the space of the quick version because doing a five minute version and a thirty minute version, it's still a lot of rendering and uploading and futzing around. But doing a one minute vertical video. It's, it's a little bit more interesting to me than doing a, a quick version and a, and a long version. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. It's all still, I'm still figuring it out. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. But, uh, but yes, being concise and touching on things that I've, I've already done or giving kind of a, the quick bits, I, I think is interesting. And then the, the questions as well. Though it's tough to answer any question. It's tough for me to do anything in a minute, frankly, but I try. Uh, I'm a latitude. I'm a longitude. I've only had a smartphone for less than two years. I wholeheartedly agree. I want to see swords. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it's really frustrating. So I type in swords and it's like, did you mean boobs though? Hey, hey, but what about the posterior over here? Like, I, I, I don't like it. It, I mean, yeah, part of me wants to be like ladies. Well done. Um, there's there's a lot of very pretty ladies on Instagram, but the, that's I'm I'm trying to see pictures of swords and knives, and fittings and craftsmen, and that's that's what I'm going for. But I it doesn't it doesn't seem to to get that that's that's what I'm going for. Um, it's odd too. Like my wife, I I browse through Instagram from time to time, and 
it, it, it's definitely just walls of boobs, but my wife never asks anything. She, I don't know if she just assumes that like, meh, you know, <laughs> I don't care. Or if, if, if she's not paying, I'm not sure. I haven't got any, any flack for it, but I'm always kind of like, am I going to have to explain like, no, honey, look, I, I typed in swords and it's like, but did you mean boobs? And I, and I didn't, I meant swords and I'm trying to, I'm trying to click on pictures of swords. So the algorithm learns that like, that's what I'm after. I don't know if I can like see where my eyes are looking or not. Maybe that's it. Anyway, um, I hear you. Not the topic, but there we go. Maybe that's a different video, like how to get Instagram to not show anything but swords. I'm losing the power hour too. How long have I been streaming? One hour and I've made it through a quarter of the Guinness. So I'm, I'll go for a little longer though. I still I've got chat to catch up on. Hmm. Samurai bird. Well, you can like two things. That's, that's fine. I'm, I'm not, I, you know, it's not necessarily the worst problem to have, but I, I would, I would prefer, there's a lot of, uh, really good photography of, of both boobs and swords in fairness, but there's a lot of really good photography of cool knives and swords and makers that I'm not familiar with. And it seems like there's a ton of hidden good stuff on Instagram. And I just have a struggle to get to any of it because it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm inundated with a bunch of stuff that I'm not interested in or not clicking on anyway, that, that I'm not there for. I also like boobs. That's anyway. All right. I only do it because I love it. Are we still talking about boobs? No. And it's so much fun to clean and admire them. Maybe we are talking about boobs. Um, can't wait for those two swords you sent. John, really looking forward to getting them. I lost my place in conversation. Japanese swords are harder to film and grab the activities depending on the polish and metallurgy. It is. I have found um, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. So lighting and like reflecting off black backgrounds and macro lenses and stuff like that could sometimes for close-up shots help out. That's that's the best I've been able to do. Um, but it it is hard. It's hard to, to get it. Uh, I usually have luck with still photography and then like moving some of the, the stuff around, uh, which because I'm, I'm talking about that, right? Like, so hypothetically, I, uh, let me go to this thingy thing and I'm talking about the S5 Katanner. Do I have any photos of it? I thought I took photos. Maybe I didn't. Well, I guess I don't have any, uh, but I do have some photos of the Zise Katana that I had a while ago. So with detailed images, what I tend to do is I have better luck with a macro lens getting it, um, getting images. So I'll do something like this. 16 by 9 to unlock it. Do could have changed the aspect ratio manually. I gotta relock it. Okay, so I can start like this and like really zoom in on a photo. And then this is not the, the best photo of choice, but then I can pull it back. And then if you watch it, it like zooms out slowly and kind of looks like video. Uh, so that that's the way that I found is the best to show some of the metallurgical properties is by uh, doing some, some images like that with a camera and then zooming in and enhancing them as much as I can and then putting them on, on video that way. But yes, giant pain in the ass because you're basically photographing a mirror and it's hard.
What are we talking about? That's my problem. As John can attest, I, if I get a sword in hand I like, I find it impossible to part with. Out of the 50 plus katanas I have at this point, you're at 50, Eric. You have, I did not know you were, you were competing for who owns most katanas. Um, I've sold them one. <laughs> and that was only as a favor to a friend. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's tricky. It's a, it's a tricky thing. I, I really enjoy though the the prospect of the next one, right? The and I, I certainly, if I had kept all of them, there's no way that I would have experienced some of the higher end ones that I have and some of the variety and, um, yeah, yeah. It's it's don't get me wrong, it's tough to get rid of them. Uh, it's tough to lose your ass on them too. But moving along gives me a chance to to try a bunch of different stuff, and I I think. I don't know if I'd change that. There, there are some that I miss, that I, I regret selling. Um, one was a, one was a, uh, uh, one that Josh Marlin at Cottontail Customs had done, and it was a Chris Cutlery KC-29. And it was a weird shaped sword, and there wasn't anything particularly special about it, but just felt absolutely magical in the hand. And it was, had a lot of weirdness about it. I don't know that, it would be the best example of a KC-29, and I, I think it was very early, uh, very early wrap from from Josh, and he's certainly gotten better at like the shaping and stuff like that. Uh, but there was just something really cool and special about it, and I sold it, and I wish I had kept it. I, I really, really like that sword. Um, there were some others, though, that felt absolutely amazing. One of them was a, a Rick Barrett 1075 sword, and buying it was, was kind of fun. I enjoyed it. I got it from a friend of mine. Um, but the process of having the fittings made... Just made me want to pull my hair out. The 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 frustration and getting the polish finished on it, it, just everything took a long time, and I was so frustrated every time I looked at it that I just I sold it. And the sword was absolutely wonderful. I love the way it looked, but like I also just saw the the frustration. So I I didn't I didn't regret some of those, even though they were wonderful swords. But yeah, it's it's not always easy to part with them. There are totally times where I sell a sword, and then I'm like, yeah, but do I? Mm, is this the right move? And so far, so far it has been. There's, I've, I've gotten a chance to see some other cool stuff. Uh, I did not see you here, RVA. Okay, not to me. Da, da, da. Where was I? Ooh, I totally am missing stuff in chat. I'm going to catch up. Let's see. We're... I tried to explain that to my girl. Sadly, she doesn't understand. No matter how many sword sword picks I like, I always have real <laughs> boobs in person. I've never liked it on Insta. That's fair. Now we're back to boobs. That's good. Great review on the Cloud Hammer. It's too bad you weren't able to break it since it's one of it's well. I in fairness, Garland, I I, I did break one. Yeah. I guess it's it's uh it's my shtick, right? Um if S5 is in some way comparable then to the S7 sword that I that I did, if it's even in the same ballpark, then I think durability is is definitely the uh the the feature of note, right? And um John at RVA Katana posted uh something that I I saw it come through my email. I haven't gotten a chance to pin it or anything yet, but he outlines how with the shipping and stuff, it's not really all that much different than the $530 sword that I that I tested because of shipping, uh, which is fair. So that is uh, a worthy point. I, I would say that um, the S7 held up really well and the S5 with what I did, granted, I, I didn't do anything super abusive, but I certainly did things that have bent many other swords. And so I I think it, it it's at least showing that it's still a very durable product, but uh, yeah. If, if I was going to break it, though, I you wouldn't have seen the video today because I'm just, I'm not up to it. He did send me something else to break, though, which is one of their lower-end swords. So if if I've broken an S7 sword, and that's pretty equivalent to some of the, the stuff in the $700 range that's being sold, if you don't have to factor in shipping, um, then some of the, the $300 swords, I, I have one of those to break. And I just, I was going to start with it. I just didn't feel, feel quite up to it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I told him. To, everyone wants me to break everything. Um, 
No, oh, something just dropped in front of me. Um, all right, where am I? Oh, catching up on chat. Sorry, uh, hearing me say catching up on chat is tough. It just it, it moves faster than I was than I can get. Uh, Matt, I also I also seem to anticipate the prospect of getting a new sword, but I don't seem to have trouble selling them. I've gotten rid of a few in my collection already. It's it's a mix, you know. There there are definitely swords that I look back and, and kind of regret selling. Um, the ones that stand out are, are from really early in the day, though. The Minatoshi Tessen, I really liked that sword. It was like a little green leprechaun-looking sword, but it was it was pretty cool looking. Uh, the the KC twenty nine, others, you know, it. I would say the majority of them, I I don't have too much of a problem with, but in the back of my mind, I've usually justified that I've I've bought swords, frankly, that are too short for me, and <laughs> most of them. Both of them are on the the you know twenty seven inch twenty eight inch side, and I I know my preference is around a, a twenty nine or thirty inch sword, and so it's it's usually easy to kind of excuse me from selling them or excuse myself to sell them because I because they're not really the right size for me, but sometimes I still regret it. Um, Okami, question for so question for anyone also how to fix a loose saya too lazy to fix it myself well it depends on which way it's loose uh generally speaking there's little wood shims like really thin wood bits that you can put in uh if you've seen like tape on veneer kind of stuff at home depot you can put that stuff in there too so long as it files like like wood tape that's wood you can put some of that in there you put it on the uh, assuming that it's the size is loose around the habaki then you put it on the usually just the the front area uh, to to tighten it up a little bit, but that that glues in there okay. Or you glue a shim in and then you you file it as needed. You kind of go too tight and, and back it down with a small file. The files are usually cheap. You can get them at Harbor Freight for like a, a little stack of them for five or ten bucks. At least that's what it used to be. Uh, it looks like a lot of people answered as well. So I am. There we go. All right, I think I got uh, reasonably caught up in the chat. So anyway, I'm gonna flip back over to video editing. When you do some of this, uh, this here video editing, there's lots of other stuff that you can do uh, with Vegas. And since I'm, I'm doing a, maybe a short plug for the software bundle that I recommended earlier, I can talk a little bit about it. Uh, things that I tend to do on my video that might be kind of cool if you're, if you're keen on it. One, uh, over here, I click track FX and it brings up this little menu and you can't hear the audio right now, but it's an audio compression tool and it lets me drop the background music or not the music but like if i have fan noise or something going on in the the background that i don't want you to hear so much uh this can help clean it up and so i drop the input gain and increase the output gain and it usually preserves most of the sound of my voice but uh, i found that it reduces some of the background hum and buzz and fan noise and stuff like that so that helps uh color grading is another one so over here, there is a thing. I click this little track FX thing. All of these things are included with Vegas. Uh, I think there's a couple new ones here from the 2020 version that I bought. But uh, like you can make it black and white, you can sharpen it, but there is a color corrector. And if I go there, this is probably not how I'm supposed to grade it, but this is how I, I have. Um, I make the mistake very frequently of using terrible lights <laughs> when I film stuff. So you can see that like around my head, it's blue. Uh, that is incidentally because if I bring my dumb head up, uh, I have in my office here some cool stuff. Like I can change my lighting to all sorts of random colors, right? Uh, so my daughter in particular will randomly shift things around and, um, 
<laughs> so I, I usually leave it, but then I can I can switch the lights around and it's pretty cool. But uh, I don't think about doing it prior to filming. So I have all this weird, like my head, the top of my head is blue. The front of my face is orange. It's it's a little strange. And I don't really know how to correct it. Joe probably knows how to correct it. But I tend to think like if I make myself look like I'm not a vampire and, and make things warmer, it tends to look a little better. Uh, I can drop the, uh, the gamma a little bit and change it. I darken things up. The less you see of me, maybe the better. It's probably not the best way to do it, but I can move this around. I can I can go Shrek for this one if I wanna. If I wanna let's let's make it some. There we go. This is I think what everyone is looking for in co in terms of color grading. <laughs> but you can change it in a way that doesn't look bad. Usually, uh, unfortunately, I have two competing. Like the front of my face is orange and the back of my head is blue, so. That is that's a challenging one to work with because they're they're kind of on the opposite ends of color. <laughs> so so if I just if I pick Smurf and I and I go a little bit bluer, then at least I'll I'll look more blue in general as opposed to also orange. Um, and it might even my face out a little bit, or maybe not. I don't know if I'm making a difference, but that is also something you can do with uh, with Vegas. You can there's there's other like default settings and stuff, but I've, I find moving the wheel around helps more. Um, you can also, let's see, media generators and texts. You can put in like a bunch of different little texty things, which, oh, I'm not on the thing where you can see my dumb face. Here I am. Gosh darn it. If only chat was telling me, hey, Matt, when you're talking, we can't see what you're doing, dummy. Uh, here. Yes. Well, color grading, color corrector, bam. All right. Here's the things. See, I can, I can move this to blue. This was the wheel that I was talking about. You can go to color corrector. There's a bunch of different things in there. Um, I can also like put on film grain if I want, and then it'll look old timey filmy if I want to I don't know. There's lots of different ways to tell stories and do cool things with this editing software. I don't know all the tricks of them, but color grading is one. Um, sometimes shifting in black and white if I can't get it to look right. And then with these media generators, I can also add a video track and then move this thing around. There we go. And so I can make this say whatever I want, but then like the video pops up and that's how you put in text. Anyway, uh, there's lots of edity stuff like that, but I think I'm going to stop showing that because I don't know how many people are terribly interested. <laughs> Editing is boring. It's the, not the most fun part, but it's a very important part if you are doing youtube -y stuff and a, a, a major part of the experience of YouTube from my perspective. <laughs> Um, what else was I going to talk about? Oh, yeah. Um, Matt Easton, some time ago, put out a thing that was like five things sort of viewers uh, miss. And he made some pretty good points about like modern expectations and, uh, well, a lot of things that were that were generally pretty accurate. But um, one thing it, it kind of got me thinking is about what people actually buy swords for. And I and in his, uh, in his video, it seemed like the predominant kind of definition was good of good was how well the, the sword emulated the kind of an object from history. And I, I hope I'm not misrepresenting what he's saying, but um, like, hey, you know, ripples and swords and things like that. How, how did they work historically? And I, I think to a certain degree, that's fair. There's, there's a large portion of people that buy swords that are looking for historical accuracy and want something that is uh, a, a mirror of history, something that could be tossed back in time and wouldn't be, wouldn't look out of place, right? That's that's certainly a thing that that some people are after. But other people just want a cool sword and they want modern. They want like a, I think the the Cloudhammer S5 is like a great example, right? It's, uh, it doesn't necessarily have a 
you know, if you, if you brought it to a museum and held it up against many of the other Japanese style swords or the Japanese swords from antiquity that are there, not antiquity, but antique Japanese swords from the, you know, the 1400s and on, it wouldn't look like you probably wouldn't find another sword that looks quite like the, the ones from Cloudhammer, right? There, it's in the ballpark, but there'd be little nuanced differences. And you certainly wouldn't find anything <laughs> that's going to be, uh, be as durable, right? But having swords made out of modern kind of super steels is, is a cool, fun thing. Um, having swords that you can cut water bottles and fun stuff in your backyard with is a fun thing. Swords that will do those things and allow you to, to kind of train uh, in doing some traditional arts. It's not that they like exempt you from, from doing them. Uh, it, the experience might be a little different, but I don't know. There's a lot of people that don't seem to want an object that could be thrown back in history <laughs> and, and blend in. They want something that if it were thrown back in history would be the reason wars were started to get it. They want the, you know, the God tier weapon, <laughs> but like, you know, a modern one. And so uh, it's it's an interesting notion that, well, was it done in history is is like a, almost an excuse that's something that that's used to excuse a lot of potential manufacturing flaws or what we would see today as flaws. Now, if, if a manufacturer in my mind is specifically going to recreate a historical object and, and you're going for as close for a one-for-one -one replica of a historical object, then yes, <laughs> I absolutely agree that that's, that's the purpose behind why it's built. That's the customer it's intended to serve. It, it'd be kind of like a, if, if somebody built a truck and it was supposed to tow a, you know, a really heavy load and they were like, you know, it's really shitty at acceleration and cornering is mediocre. Like, those are fair observations, but you know, not again, the, the focus of why it was built. Um, if you're looking at swords that are specifically made to do a certain task or specifically made to emulate an object from history, absolutely. But I think a lot of swords aren't like they're, they're, they're made as an influence or they're influenced by those historical things, but they're not really made to do that. They're made to attract people that just as much want something for the zombie apocalypse. I think there's just as many people out there that want a cool sword in the event of zombies as there are people that are buying. Potentially, I think there's more people that want one for the zombie apocalypse which I get, you know, it's a, it's a pretend thing that won't happen, but um, people want one for that reason, just as much as they want like a historical one for one. So I, I, I do think as sword reviewers, like if there's one thing that we miss a lot, it's maybe rejecting our own expectations, which is, I guess, par for the course. People watch sword reviews because they're interested in the, the take I have, or it's, it's useful in some way, but I certainly project what I'm interested in and my take and opinion on, on what I find valuable. At the same time, I do recognize that like nobody really knows what the sword market is. Um, there's a lot of different people that buy for a lot of different reasons. And I don't know that it's necessarily self-evident or even clear to the manufacturers. And, and I say that because after talking to so many, like I think about the Albions and the arms and armors and the dark sword armories and the, just the folks that are making stuff in the U S and then, having spoken to a few of the manufacturers in China, like there's so many swords that are made and the people that are buying them, some of them talk about it, right? There, there's circles that talk about this type of historical sword or this brand of sword or this model of, you know, this kind of sword or this usage for sword and it's, you know, maybe fragmented, but there's so many swords that are manufactured and sold that like it doesn't account for these niche pockets unless we're all buying, you know, Eric Hussein. <laughs> <laughs> levels of, <laughs> of sorts. Um, if you all own 50, then it starts to make a little bit more sense. But if you don't, then then it's it's a bit of a wonder who's, who's buying them all. And I, I think there's just a lot of people that buy swords for reasons that aren't necessarily what reviewers or, or people like myself that talk about them on the internet are, are valuing. What I define as good may, not, may certainly not be what a person is looking for as good. Hopefully that, hopefully I'm making sense. I, I went on a, a random ramble there. Um, okay. Well, anyway, um, so far in this, uh, this stream, I have not lost my vision and I've been able to continue speaking in full sentences. And it made it through about half a beer. So 
that's good. I'm, <laughs> it's a better stream than last time. I've also done a piss poor job of showcasing a video editing software, but I would say there's there's more interesting tutorials than than what I can give. But if you've thought about it, hopefully hopefully that's interesting. And uh, and I babbled a bit about Matt Easton's thoughts. I will return now. Um, it's been an hour and twenty five minutes. I'm probably going to wrap up the stream here in a minute, but I will I will continue for a brief moment and answer a few more sword questions because I'm not done with my beer, but I'm going to, I'm going to start trying to wrap it up here. So if you have sword questions or a topic that you would like me to blabber on about, hit it, hit, hit, hit me up. Let me know chat. Mm, beer is good. I wonder if chat on StreamYard is really delayed. I don't know. I don't know how long it takes from the time that I say stuff to come through on the interwebs. But anyway, um, yeah. Uh, while I'm waiting for questions, I can tell you a couple uh, things. I'm working on more reviews for the Cloud Hammer Steelworks swords. I have a couple more to go. There's another one that I'm not supposed to break and send out. I'll probably review that one next. Uh, the Iito and the less expensive, I can't remember what it was, Steel, the Musashi one that I have, I, I'm supposed to break. And so that will probably wait till my arm feels a little bit better. Um, generally, the fitment is very similar, though, across those swords. So if you're, if you're, and it sounds like they're improving in that aspect as well over time. So if you're looking for a sword from Cloudhammer Steelworks, uh, RBA Katana is the spot you can go buy them. And the fitment seems pretty consistent about like how tight the Ito is and the, the general ledges and things that I, I gripe about seems to be pretty consistent. If you spend $300 or $700, there's there's maybe some differences in the quality of materials used or the, the types of materials, um, but the, they tend to be assembled at, at about the same level. Um, and durability seems, <laughs> seems to seems to be pretty consistent as well. Uh, I have a European sword from the Art of Fire and Iron that I, I got a while ago and I'm, I'm supposed to push to failure. I've used it. It's very fun to move around. I really enjoy it and I haven't talked enough about it, but that is another one that is pretty cool. Uh, I got some Ichimanji knives as well. I did mention them in the holiday guidey thing that I put out, but that is... Uh, some kitchen knives that I that I get to talk about too. So I'm, I'm working on that one. Those I don't have to destroy, but I'm kind of tempted to bring them out and cut a water bottle and just like see how well they handle the croquet stick of doom. But that's probably going to be murder on my hand. Um, anyway, so I have that to work on. Uh, I have another piece from Yes Katana. Uh, I have another... I have another piece... I have a sword, a dragon sword review that's going to come out in the not too distant future, and then another sword from them that I'm pushing to failure. And what else do I have? Uh, I got two messers from Dark Sword Armory, uh, the small messer and the knockin knockenbacher or something like that. And so that is one that I am going to to review. They are arm killers, though they are hefty swords, and they they hurt a little bit to move. So, <laughs> so at, at least for me at the moment. Um, so I, I'm taking my time, but they are, they are fun and cool looking. I reached out to Yale at uh, Dark Sword Armory and I said, I've kind of been on a messer kick lately. They have a couple of them. And he, uh, he, he sent me two that did not make the, the QC cut. So, but they didn't make the QC cut because they were too heavy. There were some other issues. So I get to bang them around a little bit. Anyway, uh, those are some things that I'm working on. So I will check chat here now and see what's up. Uh, Addicted to Blades must be awesome to have all those swords sent to you to destroy and review. Yes, it is an awesome problem to have. Um, I will admit that sometimes it feels a little overwhelming and I feel bad because people send me swords and I take a long time to get done. Um, but yes, yes, it's a very cool problem to have. <laughs> it is awesome. I feel blessed and, uh, and yeah, that's it. That, I mean, it's just awesome. It's, it's very cool. I, I definitely... Uh, try to make good on making content that is is useful with them, but 
at the same time, yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. No complaints from from my end. Um, I like the Cloud Hammer S five review today. Did you notice any? Did you notice any rehoning on the edge? Notice any? Am I reading that? Roughening, roughen, not rehoning. Uh, on the edge from the frozen branches. No, I didn't. The, everything looked straight and sharp and clean, and I didn't notice any any issues. Very little like blemishing and stuff like that as well. Uh, it didn't seem to have. It it didn't. I didn't notice anything. Um, at first, I I didn't look down the sword to see like if it was straight before I got it. I did like a glancing look to see if the blade was in alignment with the handle or like off or something like that. But I didn't really look at it to see how straight it was. So uh, in my new place, I'm a little less from, I was, I was looking at it after I smacked it on the stand. I thought maybe I saw a bend, right? It was faint, but I think it was just the light and looking at it because one side of the sun was reflecting off the mune and the other wasn't. So I think that's what I was seeing uh, what kind of appeared to be like a very gentle bend. Um, but then I put it on a, a level <laughs> and, and it was not there. It was not bent at all. So, which I was kind of surprised by, but no, I didn't see any issues with the edge. I didn't see any bending. Uh, I didn't see any rolling, chipping, um, uh, none, none of that after cutting, cutting the branches. If someone wanted to get into European swords and can't afford an Albion, what would you recommend while made for real use that looks good? Well, it's, that's a fair question. The, the one that I have to review from the art of iron and fire is one that reminds me of kind of Albion in a good way. Like it's kind of a, a cross. It's like a better, it's like a, if Ronan Katana was made a little bit more nimbly and, and had a few more uh, touches of good. So there, there's that. Unfortunately, there's not really like a, a great crossover for Albion. Like it, it certainly, Angus Trim makes swords that I, I really enjoy the feel of. Uh, Sterling Armory does as well and Albion, and they, they all do excellent jobs with swords, and I really like them, but they're all expensive, and so there's not much way to get around that. Uh, Dark Sword Armory can make some, some very fun-feeling swords at kind of a, a, a middle level, uh, but I'd, I'd keep an eye out for, if you're not, generally even secondhand, Albions tend to send, sell for a lot of money, sometimes more than retail, but uh, Angus Trim swords, arms and armor swords, and uh, Sterling Armory swords don't necessarily have the same second hand or Lockwood. Um, those are those are about, or some of the the really the more recent series from Valiant Armory. They've come up for sale. They're usually more expensive, but you can you can still save a little bit of money on them. And I'd say that that is uh, is worth doing. They 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 certainly feel really really compelling and nice. I don't know that there's one that feels the same or that like is the same on a budget or just has like minor minor downsides in contrast to like the squire line from Albion, which I think you can get for about the same price as like some of the dark sword army swords. Um, and they have thicker edges and some other things, but I, I still think that you, you might appreciate those more. Uh, I really want to get myself a budget Ito, but I'm afraid it might pass through. It might not pass through customs. I don't know which end of customs you're concerned about. Uh, if you are inside the U.S., receiving things in doesn't generally tend to be a problem. If you're outside the U.S., then yes, <laughs> then then customs may do some stuff. What steel is the dragon sword you're breaking? I believe it's ninety two sixty. I have one in 1095 and one in uh, 5160. All right, come here. Be live on the internet. I got a baby over here. Okay. Okay. Well, th there's my son. Daddy duty is calling, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make it through these questions quick, and uh, but I, I'm gonna stop after the questions that I see so far, which is the Danimal. Danimal, you got the last question. Um, yes, I believe the one I'm breaking is 9260. I also have the 1095 differentially hardened one. I, I didn't push that to failure yet. Uh, any online sword you'd recommend 
right now for people who buy any online stores you'd recommend right now for people to buy accessories individually i bought a katana recently but the suka ito was loose nice to have a quality backup wrap unfortunately not generally it, it's it's a gamble to buy a uh, a handle and think it'll fit on the sword directly it may it may not it may not fit on the sword all right here's my okay so this this stream is probably going to take a turn for the worst. okay the, the people have really, no no no, no. Shh, 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 shh. calm we're calm please don't scream no that's not working well i'm sorry to everyone with the volume up uh i have no control over this child yeah um Anyway, uh, no guarantee that it'll fit. The only way that you can get it is to send is it, it off to somebody to have it rewrapped. It, it usually costs the tune of hundreds of dollars. What, what, what do you want? You want this car? So. No, you, oh, you want M&Ms. No, you can't have those. Uh, naturally, I have this big bag of M&Ms. This is what he's after, and I'm not going to give him any um, yet. It's not that I keep them all for myself. All right. Um, you need some help? Sure. Uh, ping me. Let me know how, what you can do. Dada! Okay. Dada! That's good. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I am. I'm sorry. Yeah, that uh, that went poorly. I, I, for the none of you that would want to continue listening after after that, I do have to go uh, do some stuff in a minute. But anyway, uh, I said I get through them, so I will. How many beers does it take to clean all your swords? Uh, last time I went through it, it was five or six hours. I did two three-hour live streams, but the live stream made it took longer take longer, and it, it, it took two three-hour-ish sessions. Uh. Hey, Matt, you're doing, are you doing a review of the Matt Easton? Well, I would totally do it, but I, I don't have one. So no, as far as I know, nobody's sending me one. Um, and so I, I, but I would certainly be happy to. I've, I've put gentle suggestions on, on Matt Easton's videos. Like, hey, if you need anyone, uh, you know, smack some of those around. In fairness, though, I don't, um, I don't think they're, lacking reviews there's been a lot of interest recently and matt's done a really good job of getting information out and in and, and telling people what they're about and there's there's been there's been a lot of people buying them a lot of people talking about them so in terms of swords that that receive uh interest and knowledge i, I don't think it's necessarily going to be hard for people to find uh something to help them decide if it's if it's worth their money or not so I, i'm not sure apart from my typical shtick of smacking them into a metal pole uh, what what I would offer, um, and I'm I'm behind on doing that for other things. So I'd be happy to do it. Don't get me wrong. I'd I'd love to get one. Some of them look really cool. Uh, the the single handed one that looks like a a double edged sword but isn't and is off center. That one looks uh, kind of interesting and cool. It looks like a fun cutting sword. So anyway, there's there's some stuff that I think probably looks really cool, but I don't I don't think that I would necessarily add much, even if if one was sent. Uh, I, I believe, uh, alien dude has made some content around them. Uh, Kane Shen, I'm, I'm probably saying his name wrong, has, has done some content on them around, around them as well. Obviously Matt Easton has, uh, Akito Ka, Phil, Phil Martin, I believe has done some cutting with some of them. Uh, and then there's, there's been some other chatter on the internet about, about them as well. And not all comments are, are super sensational and, and, you know, great, but generally, I would say the overall overall is is seems to be pretty positive. Um, anyway, hopefully that helps. Um, parts until proper fittings found. I don't know what that was about, but Danimal, how are you all doing today? This was the last question I said I would cover, and it uh, I I'm doing I'm doing better. I'm sorry about the screaming, but it's been fun to chat about swords, um, and I hope I hope you all enjoyed it. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry for those of you that were here for the screaming kid. 
uh, yeah, he does that. He does that a lot. And fortunately, my my daughter was holding him back after nap. But now I have to go do some daddy duty. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit that up. Thank you, uh, everyone who stuck around and listened to me blab about swords. It's been a hoot, and I will try to try to do it again in the not too distant future. Cheers, everyone.